All right, so today we're going to be going over some basics. If you ever want to go over these things in person, we do offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring classes where you can work one-on-one. -on -one. We will go through the boards that you bring in, or we can go through the boards that I have in my daily queue. I'll be asking you questions on what you think is wrong with them. I'll be fixing some of them, and then I'll also be breaking them and giving them back to you and having you work on them at your own student workstation. So today we're going to be going over a very basic issue, which is blown backlight fuse and also bad LCD connector on a motherboard which is resulting in no backlight on the screen. All right, so today I'm going to be doing a basic no backlight board, and I'm also going to be answering a question that I was asked, which is, can I use the fuse from another motherboard on the motherboard that I'm trying to fix? And the answer to that is you absolutely can. Ideally, uh, in an ideal world, you would use a brand new fuse. You reusing a fuse is kind of like... It's kind of, you know, it's kind of like the difference between buying a used jacket and buying used underwear, if that makes any sense, but you, you can do it and it will work. So this is a board over here that has a blown backlight fuse and a LCD connector that's a little bit destroyed. It, 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 the LCD connector can be reused on this, it's just I really wouldn't want to do that because I know that it's going to come back in a day if I do that. You're fired! So let's go under the microscope, take a look at what we have here, and uh, get started. So when we go under the microscope, you'll see that there are two pins on my LCD connector that don't look as good as the rest, and those are the pins that are burned, even though I've tried to remove the oxidation as best as I can. So we're going to remove this connector. So it's the pins 21 and pin 22. I'm going to kick on the air filter here. This is not exactly a super complex repair, nothing, nothing crazy. Not a lot of brain power being used. Replacing connectors and fuses is a very brainless job that will get very, very boring very, very quickly. I like things where I have to think, so these are not jobs that I'm really, really fond of. But hell, it's money. Who says no to money? So we're going to use this JBC, and this connector is going to come right off. If you have experience with a shitty hot air station, this is going to make you jealous. So I'm going to put the hot air right now. And I just turned the thing on. And you're going to see what happens here. Like, like nothing. Like, like literally, I mean, it, it takes no effort to remove an LCD connector with this. This is a fucking monster. It's a monster. Now we're going to put a new one on. But before we put a new one on, we're just going to clean up the bass a little, and listen to the Hacko song, as Mark Schaefer describes it, play for a while. That's the Hacko song. That's from the jackass engineer at Hacko that decided that when the thing is, it doesn't have something plugged in, that it will beep incessantly. That's something I will truly never understand. Like, I get making it beep if this is off the hook, and it's been off the hook for too long, or if it has a way of sensing that the operator has been, is not present, but... This is, you know, the iron is off the hook and hot. I get that. I understand not wanting to burn people. But why the fuck would you make it beep nonstop incessantly when it's not plugged in? That's what, see, that's the thing. That's where I start thinking that these things were marketed not to us, but to slave shops. Where, you know, because you have to think about this. So they set it up with this little card here, right? So they have this little card interface on the FX951. And the idea behind the card interface on the FX951 is that the user themselves cannot cannot change the temperature. The user can't change the temperature. However, the administrator can. So the whole idea here is that, you know, the user is not allowed to change the temperature on anything that they're working on. Now, you know, where would that happen other than some type of slave shop where, you know, the, you hire people and you're like, no, you work at this temperature. And then you have this, this, this bullshit feature where it doesn't beep when it's left on, it beeps when it's off. So, you know, like, Dare somebody unplug it because they, like, they want to go to the bathroom or something, you know, it, it, it screams at them and says, who unplugged their station? And I could just imagine somebody running by with, with, with a whip and like beating the little Foxconn worker that's sitting there working. It's just, I don't know. That's just a theory of mine. But I, I kind of think that this hacko stuff, like the only explanation I have for a lot of the really annoying functionality in it is that it was just designed for places that, that treat people like slaves. Die. There's no other reason to have this type of functionality. Just, yeah, shut the fuck up. All right, so now after we do that, 
I'm going to clean the board a little bit. Just a little bit. We're going to take my clean room wiper over here and some alcohol. See, the clean room wiper is not going to leave the, the stuff that a paper towel will. So if you're new to this, you may not know how to make a paper towel clean without leaving marks. So this, these, you can get clean room wipes sets on eBay very, very cheaply. And you can also get 99% alcohol from com companies like, I think, Get Met Online. I'm not sure if I have the right one. But there are some companies where you can get this stuff from on eBay where you can spend you know, 80 bucks and get 5 gallons of alcohol or 80 bucks and 4 gallons of alcohol. It's pretty good stuff. See how fast it evaporates? That's exactly what we're looking for there. So now we're going to take a connector out of the bin of connectors that I have. You can get these on AliExpress. You can get them on eBay. So long as you do not buy them from L2 Computer, we're friends. If you start buying them from L2 Computer, we'll no longer be friends. See more in the L2 Computer video on this channel. So we're going to put some Amtec 559 V2TF Flux down, which you can find on my website, mailin.repair. We do sell Amtec Flux. And then I place the connector down. Now, the most important thing here, the most important thing when doing a connector is to ensure that the connector itself is flat on the motherboard. If the connector is flat on the motherboard, nothing here is going to work. Now, the problem here is that you're supposed to be adding solder. Uh, you're supposed to be adding solder at any time that you have the heat there, because any time I have the heat there and there's solder, you see how the, it stops smoking after a while? You see how you, you don't see the smoke? That's the flux itself burning away and becoming nasty. So I don't have a hand to keep the connector flat on the board. I cannot do this while adding new solder, while holding the iron. I'm a human. I have two hands, not three. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some solder on the tip of my iron. I'm going to have flux that I've already put on the board. And I'm going to take it to one of these stabilizing pins. So by stabilizing pins, I mean these pins over here that are not actually attached to a part of the circuit. And instead, I'm hitting the capacitor like a noob. Oh, well, let's, let's hit this one right over here. All right, so we've got you stuck down. Okay, now we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing. You go to the other side, and again, add a little bit of solder to the end, not a ton. And we're going to push this down. Remember, we want the, connect we want the pins to be flat on the board. In an ideal world, in an ideal world, this, uh, this setup would actually work without me having to solder the connector onto the motherboard. We would not have to solder the pins. The whole idea behind how this is working is that we want, the we want the pins of the connector to be pushing against the board so hard that it already works, that the solder is simply there to just go over a connection that's already being made. It shouldn't be, the solder shouldn't be what's actually making the electrical c contact. The, the primary electrical contact should simply be the fact that, there is, that the pins are touching the board. That, that, that's, what we're, that's what we're shooting for. I'm not saying that's what we're actually going to get most of the time, but that is what we are shooting for. Okay, see what I did? I went up the pin and then down the pin and then I touched the pad. So I'm going to touch the pad because I want the pad to get hot. Then I'm going to touch the pad and the pin because I want the solder to flow to the pad and the pin. And then I'm going to go right back down just to make sure I got everything. See that? Again. So again, keep, it, keep in mind how soldering works. The way soldering works is that the, is that the, uh, that the solder is going to follow the source of the heat. So you have to realize that what, whatever you're putting heat on is what the solder is going to flow to. And it's also going to flow to the largest source of heat, which is why I'm kind of trying to use the elbow instead of just the tip. You can go over each individual pad just like this. Now the thing is, they make smaller irons that you can do this with. And I own one of those smaller irons and I've actually reviewed it. But I understand that many people don't have an extra iron. They need to work with what they have. And I also want to show you what you can do when you do something like that. Oh no. Oh no, I've made a bridge. What do I do? That means that my soldering is messed up. I have to get a new connector, right? Right? No. What you're going to do is you're going to use your Hacko 599B. That's Hacko 599B with a little mesh inside of it to clean your iron until it's 100% perfectly clean of solder. And you're going to put some Amtec 559 flux across. You're going to put a nice little thing across. And you're going to have the iron go as flat to the board as you can. And you're going to you don't want it to be like this. That's not going to do shit. You want like this and you're going to go and slide. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Woo. Yep. And then we're going to do the end pad over here.
Okay. We can make that look a little bit better, can't we? We're going to make it a little bit nicer. I have to make sure this looks a little bit nicer since my boss just walked in the room. And she can see what I'm doing on camera. I don't want to get in trouble. Okay. Now the most important thing here when you're doing the front pins. When you're working on these front pins here. Not the front pins. This, uh, front, this front section of the connector. What you have to understand is that. This is where the, if you get, if the solder flows around too much, it's going to get inside the connector. And then when somebody tries, to, so let's say the solder from here flows into there. When somebody tries to plug it in, you know what's going to happen. Lots of nastiness. So we're going to try our best to not get any solder inside the connector. So use minimal solder here. Be very conservative. Less is more. Less is less, but less is also more. We don't want to get solder inside the connector. If you get solder inside the connector, it's game over. Just a tiny bit. Tiny, tiny bit. Very small amount. And we're going to get the other side as well. So over here, we're going to touch up the other side. Touch up the other side like so. Come on, hand. Go forward, too much, down, too much, die. This is bullshit. You know, I tried to hire an intern. Well, I mean, like a paid intern, not one of those like music industry interns where you don't pay the intern to help me with this stuff because my hands are getting shittier and shittier. I'm not quitting because he said the job is too far away. Ugh. It's hard to find good help. It truly is. So I... I will sit here doing it myself. And I feel like I could have a little less solder there, so I'm just going to correct it. Again, in the front, I really do believe less is more. You know, I feel like I have enough on these ends to hold it down just fine. And you can see here that everything is good except for a little bridge that I created. Oh, no. Oh, never mind. It doesn't matter at all. And you can see that everything is pretty much nice here. I have nice joints. Nice connector, a pretty connector, connector that I can be proud of. And pins two and three are bridged, and they are supposed to be bridged inside the board, so I don't care. So I'm going to let those two stay bridged because they're supposed to be. See? It's harder to remove the bridge there. See how, why it was harder to remove the bridge is because those two are actually interconnected within the board, so they're sharing a heat source. So when I'm putting heat on them to attract the solder away, it's going back to the pins because the pins are sharing the same trace. Now what we have to do is we have to go over the fuse. So the fuse is going to be over here, this thing with a P on it. Now when you're trying to remove something like a fuse, you'll note that it's easier to remove it if you put just a little bit of flux on it. It'll help the solder flow just a little better when you're removing it. This is not so much as important with this fuse because we don't care if it breaks, but that's going to be very important with the other fuse that we try to take off because we don't want to have to use a lot of heat to remove it because we need to reuse it. Keep in mind that the entire idea of how a fuse works is that if too much power goes through the fuse, that the fuse will blow. Now, a fuse passes power. but So, if too much power goes through something, it'll blow. But do you know what else can be considered power? Heat. Yes, power is energy. And energy is heat. So, you can blow a fuse very easily by using too much heat on it. Which is why you want to use the minimal amount of heat possible if you're going to be reusing a fuse. So, we're just going to go over that. And we go over this. Notice how all the excess solder gets absorbed onto the iron. It doesn't matter how much solder you actually use. What matters is that it goes onto the iron. It's kind of similar to wave soldering. You have the, so now we're going to remove the fuse from this board. It's 13-inch retina board. Just make sure it's surrounded in flux. Heat from far away. You want to be very careful with this fuse. You don't want to put it too many, through too many heat cycles. 
Now, once the flux starts to flow away from around the component, I know that I can go in closer with the iron. By iron, I mean hot air. Now we can slide the new fuse in. Patience is key. Now I could grab it with the tweezers and shove it in after I've melted the pads, or I could put the fuse on top of the pads and let it float in. The reason I'm doing it this way instead of my usual way is because I want to show that it is actually possible to do it this way because I find that a lot of people have the fuse blowing away. And the reason that you have it blowing away is because you're not patient when you're using this method. This method absolutely works, it just requires a little bit of patience. Now the fuse is on the board. We're just going to get rid of the excess solder on each side so it looks a little neat. So put some flux on it, we take my iron, wait for it to get hot, and we're going to touch it to each end, and the excess solder is going to flow onto this. And there we have it, a nicely soldered fuse. Beautiful. And let's just make it look like new. Yep. We don't need any of that oxidation stuff on the top. Perfect. Okay. Now we get to see if the work actually does anything. And it works. So hopefully you learned something. Now, if you have any questions in the tools that I like to use, if you have any questions in the microscope and things of that nature, please do a search of the channel. You'll find a lot of information on the tools that I use and why I use them. You'll find reviews of different hot air stations, different soldering stations, and you'll find my commentary on different things that I use and what I think you should use.